HMS Pinnacle by Mr. W.S. Gilbert and Mr. Arthur Sullivan. This production was a joint effort between Kappa High School and the Opera Theater of Pittsburgh. We would like to send our sincere appreciation to Jonathan Eaton, our artistic director, director of Opera Theater of Pittsburgh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please turn off all your cell phones and gadgets. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise and join me in singing for Her Royal Highness Queen Victoria.
round and rosy. Might be for my heart this simple blood. But hark ye, my merry friend, has ever thought that beneath this gay and frivolous exterior there may look a cankerworm, which is surely eating its way into my very heart. No, my lass, I can't say I ever thought that. I thought it often. <laughs> yes, you look like a sort of wood. What's the matter with the man? Isn't he well? Take no heed of him. That's only poor Dick Deadeye. Dick Deadeye? I say, it's a beast of a name, ain't it? Dick Deadeye! Well, it's not a nice name, no. I'm ugly, too. Ain't I? You certainly are. Not to mention misshapen, rough, and aromatic Ooh. as a sailor of a fountain. I am a fountain of nihilism, deserving of nothing but contempt. You do have contempt for me, don't you? Aye, we do! My is from such a face and form as mine, even the noblest sentiments sound like the black utterance of a depraved imagination. Oh, but I was not always as you see me now. Once! A long time ago, when I was young and my future golden, I was through the tender glances with the gem of my eye. Was it a woman? He <laughs> <laughs> thinks I spoke too much already. But tell me, who the youth is watching me with difficulty hanging on his course? That is the bravest lad in all the fleet, brave for extra.
Brooks married the wife of Prince Rastro. No matter how good a hand ye are. Did, did I them sentiments of yours or disgrace your father Niger? But it's a strange anomaly that the gods of a man who hails from the quarter deck may not love another who lays out in the foyard off. For a man is but a man, whether he hoists his flag up on the main truck or his slacks on the main deck. Aye! Ah, tis a queer and unjust word where there are those whose charms can be less, but with a wink of an eye. But I've spoken too much already.
yielded lordly. No, father, the object of my love is no lordly. A pity me, for he is but a humble sailor on board to throw the ship. Impossible. Yes, it is true. Too true. A common sailor? Oh, but. I blush for the weakness that allows me to charge such a passion. I hate myself when I think of the death to which I have stooped and permitted myself to love my so ignorant before. But I love him! I love him! I love him! <laughs>
beg your pardon. I don't think I understand you. If you please, of course, if you please. You're a remarkably fine fellow. Yes, Your Honor. The first rate seaman on the bow. There's not a smarter topman in the Navy, Your Honor. Though I say you shouldn't. Not at all. Not for self respect, nothing more. Can you dance a hornpipe? No, Your Honor. That's a pity. All sailors should dance hornpipes. <laughs> I will teach you one this evening after dinner. Now tell me, and don't be afraid, how does your captain treat you, eh? A better captain, don't walk the deck, Your Honor. Aye! Good. I'd like to hear you speak well of your commanding officer. I dare say he don't deserve it, but still it does you credit. Can you sing? I can hum a little, Your Honor. Splendid! Cousin Hebe! Yes, Sir Joseph? My composition, Cousin Hebe, if you please. Thank you, Sir Joseph! Thank you. Then hum this at your leisure. It is a song I have composed for the use of the Royal Navy. It is designed to encourage independence of thought and thought and action in the lower branches of the service, and to teach the principle that the British sailor is any man's equal, excepting mine, a hymn to my inferiors. And now, Captain Corcoran, a word in your cabin on a tender, sentimental subject. I ask the Joseph. Benson! In commemoration of this joyous occasion, a single hey. extra grog is served out to the ship's crew at seven beds. If what, Your Honor? If what? I don't think I understand you. If you please. What? Uh, the gentleman is quite right. If you please. If you please. I hold this water seas, refreshing if you please.
she referred to? I don't know, I can tell. Captain Harker! <laughs>
both his rank. I desire to convey to you, officially, my assurance that your hesitation is attributable to that circumstance. It is uncalled for. Oh, then your lordship is of the opinion that very happiness is not in this of the discrepancy of rank. <laughs> I am officially of that opinion. That the high and the lowly may be truly happy together, provided that they truly love one another. <coughs> Madam, I desire to convey to you, officially, my opinion that love is a platform upon which all of right Oh, thank you, Sir Joseph. I didn't hesitate, but I will hesitate no longer. He wants to know how eloquently he pleaded his rival's cause. <laughs> The 
that's ready to take a step forward. Cochran, three paces to the front. March! If what? I don't understand you. If you <laughs> be what? Perfectly right. If <laughs> please. Oh. If you <laughs> Oh, my God. 
It's all